Hello and welcome to the Pro Tipster Football Podcast. I'm Pro Tipster Paddy and joining me in studio is Pro Tipster Dan. On Skype we have Pro Tipster Martin and today we're going to take a look at some of the best FA Cup, Championship and a couple of matches from around Europe as well. So Dan, welcome back. Ah, Thanks Paddy. You're looking well, you have a new hat. Uh, I have a new hat. I'm wearing a Hapoel Tel Aviv hat, uh, so I've just come back from Tel Aviv. Um, unfortunately, didn't get to see them play, though, because their stadium is being rebuilt. Yeah, unlucky. Well, next time, yeah. next time. Uh, Martin, how's it going? Yeah, good, thanks. It's podcast day, which means it's nearly the weekend. So yes. <laughs> True, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, right, lads, look, we'll, we get straight into this because we have loads of matches lined up. Uh, Martin, we'll start with you. The FA Cup match between Southampton and Watford. Uh, yeah, tough, tough one to call. It's not, it's not, not one I'm really excited about, to be honest. Um, I've actually heard a rumour that Marco Silva might be in line to replace Pellegrino at Southampton, which would be a, well, a pretty, pretty big coup for Southampton if they managed to pull that off. But, um, I don't, I don't think Southampton fans are happy with Pellegrino. Um, and I think they'll find it tough against Watford, in all honesty, this weekend. Um, it was a two-all draw a couple of weeks ago. Um, Watford, Watford have lost the last five away, but a new manager coming in. Or oh, I always, you know, always like the, the fact that a new manager comes in, new impetus in the side. They, you know, and they're away from home. It's not a league game, so they're not going to be sitting back. Um, I actually think there's value here because um, Southampton drawn three and lost two of the last five at home. I just don't think they've got any firepower at the moment up front. Um, and Watford plus 0.5 on the Asian handicap at nearly evens. It's 1.94 is cracking value for me. So that's what I'm going for. Daniel. Um, as, as, as always with their fake up games, I've got one word underline lineups. Um, I'm interested because obviously, as Martin said, it's Javi Garcia's uh, first game as Watford manager. Um, but I don't believe in the new manager bounce. It's statistically proven that it's not true. And Dude. it is, it is unfortunately. And the, the, the problems that have beset Marco Silva are still in place to Javi Garcia. Watford still have a lot of injuries. Southampton, yes, I know that, um, well, the, I know the fans aren't happy and I can understand why because they, they wanted European football this year and they've, they've gone nowhere. Um, I think it's two wins in 15. Their last win in all competitions was in the FA Cup against Fulham. If I remember rightly, but I don't know. Um, I think Southampton will see this game as a distraction. I think Watford might see the game as a distraction. Watford have got players out all over the shop. Southampton, I don't know who they'll play. So as much as I'm tempted by Watford plus a half, I'm going to wait for the lineups on this one. Uh, Dan, uh, based on what, on what Martin was saying there, you're, you are in a position on the Southampton board. Do you fire Pellegrino and get Silva? Yes. Yeah, why? Um, because I don't think Pellegrino has been good enough, but I think Southampton's problems are further than Pellegrino. Um, Southampton actually have um, this thing where, I think Watford do too, where they're actually looking um, at, at who they're going to replace their manager with all the, all the time. Watford have got a uh, Watford have got this thing where they actually know their managers are short term, and so they're always uh, they're always ready for the next one. And they've got a set criteria that they're hired to. Southampton have, uh, have kind of done this too. I don't know if Marco Silva fits that criteria. I don't know if Marco Silva is someone they've scouted. But I think it's not just Pellegrino. I think Les Reed has been a problem at Southampton. That that their uh, their signings yeah. of late have not been great because um, it, it, their, their, their transfers are done not just by the manager, but they've got like a director of football kind of setup. Mm-hmm. And you look at the players they've signed. And they've not, they've not, they've not done well, mm. uh, in the last 12, 18 months. So I think that's where the problem lies as much as with the coach. So if I was on the Southampton board, would I replace Pellegrino with Marco Silva? Yes, I would, but I would also be looking at Les Reed and thinking, hmm. Yeah, time for a change there too. Right, Dan, we'll stick with you then for the next match. Uh, Wigan are taking on West Ham. Yeah, um, I can't believe the handicap line on this is exactly zero. Um, the, 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 there's nothing between the two teams according to the bookies which That's is crazy isn't it it's, it's, it's got to be kind of sickening for West Ham fans for anyone <laughs> winning a league one um, I don't know I think David Moyes has done really well at West Ham um, yeah they're, they're going to 
probably rotate through the team a little bit, but I think West Ham have improved markedly since Moyes has come in, and yeah, okay, you know. Um, it's, so it's, what, what, what then? Explain to me, what are the bookies looking Are they just looking at FA Cup form? Because against Shrewsbury, they were muck. It must be. I, 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 sorry to cut across you there, Martin. No, go on. Um, sorry. I think it, I think it's more than just about FA Cup form. I think they know, um, the bookies are obviously aware that there's going to be some kind of rotation. Um, yeah. and when you've got a team that's rotated playing away, it's, it, it, they're much less likely to continue to perform well than a team that's rotated playing at home. They, it, it's where you've got a Premier League team away is where, is where the upsets are most likely to happen. So, and Wigan are in cracking form at the moment. So this is why the bookies have, have priced Wigan so low. Yeah, have not lost in 10 uh, overall. Mm. Six wins, four draws. Uh, Martin, um, you going to be a happy hammer come Saturday evening? Well, I hope so. Um, I, 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 like with Dan, I can't believe the line on it. And, you know, West Ham at, to win at 2.70 is, uh, yeah, he's worth worth lumping on in my opinion, and and you know I'm a West Ham fan, so I'm always going to back, <laughs> always going to back my team. But um, you know, it is there is going to be rotation, and I think that is that is why uh, the bookers have priced it up as it is. Um, but we're strong enough. We got you know, uh, Reese Burke played really well against Shrewsbury, scored the winner, um, to get us through to the next round. Hernandez will probably start up front. Lanzini and Alnautovic, unfortunately, are. Are out for a couple of weeks, probably three or four weeks, which is really annoying. Um, but yes, I know you said we're going to run beaten for you know ten, eleven, twelve games in all competitions or whatever it is. But it's a League One side, and you've got to look at. Um, I think you've got to look at the atmosphere and the ground that that teams are going to. And yes, we, you know, at Shrewsbury, it was quite intimidating—a very narrow, small pitch, and the fans right on top of you. Whereas at Wigan. I think the pitch is a little bit bigger, you know, and I think it allow us to play a little bit of football. Um, yeah, so there's definitely. I've been to the DW uh, twice, and I think it's uh, one of the, the most away friendly stadiums in in the league. <laughs> it's it's great as an away fan. Like they've got a massive away fan bar. You've got the hole behind the goal, and it's a big open pitch. I, I've also been to. Uh, New, the, the new meadow, the new game meadow, in just Shrewsbury's ground, and yeah. it's, it's tiny. So yeah, there's definitely, definitely something to, uh, to take into account. Well, the life of a Birmingham yeah, City sure. fan, huh? It takes you everywhere. <laughs> it certainly does, yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll move on then. Uh, Sheffield United are taking on Preston in an all championship uh, tie. Uh, let's, uh, we'll stick with you, Martin. Yeah, go on. Uh, it's a tough one to call. Um, and in fact, I couldn't call it. I'm going down the middle. So I think a draw at 3.19 is worth taking on. Uh, these two sides met in 2015, actually, in the FA Cup. Uh, Preston won 3-1 in a replay, actually, after a one-all draw um, at their place. And Preston also beat them just before Christmas. Uh, let's not forget that. Um, you know, Sheffield United started so well, but a, a, a bit bit of a mixed, mixed bag in recent weeks. Um Drawn the last two games, um, have Preston, Sheffield United only won one of the last six at home as well. It's just going by form, really. I, it, I'm going to be completely honest. I'm not clued up on either team, really, when it comes to team news. And I've had a little look, and I can't really find out uh, anything in, in terms of the team news at the moment. So uh, I'm going to go on the draw at 3.19, but I will probably wait for the teams just to see if any star men are out. However, I don't expect... Uh, with the positions of both clubs, I expect them both to go for it. So, um, don't think any, any major rotation is going to happen in this game. Um, and I can't separate them. So yeah, the draw for me. Fair enough. Dan? Um, the only factor that, that, that you've not mentioned, Martin, that I'm going to throw in there is the referee. Oh. Uh, the referee for this game is Graham Scott, who took charge of the Chelsea Norwich game. And we all know how controversial that one was. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> and, because I was reading the Sheffield United forum this morning, they're all moaning about it. And, and a few people pointed out that maybe the controversial decisions in, in that Chelsea Norwich game, that, that Scott actually got most of them right. Um, maybe, but, this is this is a guy who's um, pretty pretty famous at the moment for booking people for diving, uh, sending people off mm. for diving even. So maybe um, we don't really cover this on Pro Tipster, but maybe looking at cards might might be an option on this one. Um, looking at over under on on yellow cards, on red cards, 
Um, that that that's might be the direction I'd go with this game, um, purely because of that ref. Yeah, that's an interesting way of looking at it, all right. Yeah, smart Ooh. Dan, you're smart. S M R T, S M R T. Thanks for listening to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons. Sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips. Go to ProTipster.com for more details. Uh, let's move on then to the all Premier League clash then between Liverpool and West Brom. Of course, we all know that Liverpool, uh, floundered against West Brom a couple of weeks ago. They had a, a draw there. This is happening on Saturday night. It's a late kickoff. Uh, Martin. Uh, yeah. Liverpool coming into this after losing against bottom of, bottom of the league, Swansea, which is a very surprising result and ruined my accumulator. Which didn't help. <laughs> but it's Liverpool, Martin. Is it really that surprising? Uh, <laughs> well, no, we called it on the podcast, didn't we? Yeah. Last week, we yeah. said it was going to happen. You said it. Um, yes. And it did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, are we going to see, I mean, obviously last time Liverpool got two or draw against West Brom at Anfield a couple of years ago, they, they celebrated that fact. Will we see that again? I don't know. <laughs> Remember that? That was embarrassing. Um, <laughs> that was crazy, wasn't it? But, um, I expect rotation here from Liverpool and I think, um, West Brom, They've got a little bit of a chance, you know. I think Jordan Henson's back fit, so I think he might come in. And then you've got the likes of, you know, Lalana, uh, Clavin, Milner, Solanke, probably even Danny Ings and, and the likes of Alexander Arnold potentially coming into the starting lineup. Um, I don't think West Brom have got that, that much strength in depth to rotate too much. Um, and although, you know, Liverpool may, may end up going on and winning it because it is at Anfield, um, I've actually gone for both teams to score here because I think there's a little bit of value at 1.92. I just think uh, with the Liverpool rotation, I think it just just gives West Brom a little bit of opportunity to push forward a little bit more uh, and maybe nick a goal. Oh, but I thought Virgil, Virgil van Dijk was going to sort out all their problems. Oh, yeah. Well, that, <laughs> it's crazy how everyone thought just one signing was going <laughs> to solve everything. It just doesn't work that he, way, he got, a, he got a lot of blame, though, on Monday night for the goal, and I, I wouldn't really blame him for the goal. It's just, he was I trying know, to he, head her he a ball. Should, yeah, but he, I mean, you're a £75 million defender. Why are you heading it like that? No, that's, it, I know, it, it's true, but, like, a lot of times when I, when I, when I do hear um, criticism of footballers, I kind of think, like... Like the lads doing the criticising, like have they actually played football? Because it's it's just it's it's an instinct. The ball is coming to you. You move to get the ball or get rid of the ball, you know. And they're like, I mean, a lot of times you don't have a lot of control over where a header goes, you know, unless you're someone who's like just like the alpha male of headers, uh, Tim Cal, you know, or something like that, who can you know pinpoint where his header's going to go. Most people they just kind of. Try and hit it off one part of their head because usually it goes <laughs> that direction. You know what I mean? Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. A, maybe professional defender, footballers I can. <laughs> you know. Well, I, I think personally as a defender, you're always taught, even at a young age like Sunday League, you're always taught if you're going to head it defensively in the box, you head it head it away or head it, head it up. Um, and he, he did neither. So I don't know. I think he's partly to blame, to be honest, for that. Um and obviously, they you got Dan, Dan's itching to get in here. I can see. I was going to say, are, are you saying Virgil <laughs> Van Dijk's got a fifty p head? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I do, Dan. Maybe that's how I used to head the ball. <laughs> um, what do you think is going to happen here, Dan? Um, so I, I, again, I've got written lineups. Um, it's always the thing with FA Cups. Um, the, the question is, are Liverpool going to be an F1 car stuck in West Bromwich Albion traffic? <laughs> I love that. Car, car with car rally out is great for cars. Yeah, are brilliant. That was class. Yeah. Um, I've got to be honest. Uh, as much as I think there'll be rotation, I think uh, Moreno might come back in at left back. I think uh, Lovren might get a run at centre back. I, I, I think Liverpool have got too much West Brom. Um, West Brom, they, they were they were better. Uh, in their last game, Krakowiak finally, finally, finally starts to look like a player who actually did want to play for PSG and actually is decent. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, the West, West Brom just don't have the strength in depth. And I, and worse still, they don't seem to want to play players, um, except for like the first, you know, 14 or 15 and the first team and a couple of subs. The, 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 the this, they, they signed um, Oliver Burke, didn't they, from RB Leipzig, yeah, and he's yeah. just not getting the yeah, game. No. And I don't get it. You know, you sign a player for like that much money. I think it's eleven million quid, and they're not playing him. 
I, I, I don't understand it at all. Um, I looked at the line at the moment. It's about one and a half. So that's uh, Liverpool to win by two clear goals. Mm, I'm not sure I'd go with that yet. Um, because, you know, Liverpool could just field a, a really inexperienced or a, maybe a team of fringe players who, who need minute. It, I, I, I think it's, it's not just about resting key players. It's about giving minutes to players who, who need them. So like Danny Ings, for instance, needs minutes. I, I was wondering whether Daniel Sturridge will get a game because I know that they were on about loaning him out to, was it Inter? Yeah. Into, yeah. 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 So, what, do they do they give him minutes and like to to give him match fitness or uh, and risk him getting injured and not going out on loan or do they leave him out again and and hope that he goes out on uh, like he leaves the club? I'm not sure. Um, as with all of these games, it's all about the lineups. Always, always about the lineups. Um, and I know people listening to this will think, ah, oh, but I need a bet. Well. That's the chance you take with the FA Cup, you know. It, 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 it's, yeah. I, I would say Liverpool should win and should win by two clear goals. I think the bookies have got it right. But if they then field, you know, uh, if they field Karras and goal and Clavan in defence and so Solanke up front, yeah. I'd be less inclined to think that will happen. Mm. Whereas if they play Mignolet in goal and um, maybe uh, Lovren, um, partnering Matip and maybe uh, Lallana in midfield with Henderson. I think, yeah, okay, they can do it, you know, that, that side's still quite decent. But it, it, that, that's the chance you take, and obviously, when the lineups come out, the line will move as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. They were getting a lot of criticism on social media, as usual, for selling Coutinho and not having a kind of playmaker who could open up uh, Swansea's defence. But, in fairness, uh, I was watching Klopp's interview with Sky after, and it went on kind of a little bit longer than usual because he was, he was so into it, uh, talking about, Mm. Uh, why uh, they hadn't scored or why they they couldn't break down Swansea, and he was very open and frank about it, which I thought was was really good. And I, I, I see, I'm, I'm I'm nerdy about all these stats and all and tactics and all, so I really like that. But uh, he just he just took it on the chin and says, "Look, we weren't good enough. We weren't breaking them down. We 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 did certain things wrong in certain wrong positions. We weren't fast enough. We weren't doing this that." And I thought it was really good. I'm always aware though with stuff like that, like sometimes. Our manager's giving away their game a bit too much, I wonder. It's kind of like, um, uh, wasn't it a couple of years ago when Liverpool had a great run and then they lost to Stoke or something and then Mark Hughes came out and says, well, that's how you beat Liverpool, you know? It's funny you say that, actually, because um, I, saw a, I saw someone say about Burnley's recent change in form and they pointed to that quote from Sean Dyche about being the proudest man in Proudsville. And how they've just like gone downhill <laughs> since he said those exact words. <laughs> <laughs> maybe there's something in it. I don't uh, know. Maybe, well, maybe. Okay, now so joining me now we have pro tipster Marco, our Italian expert. How's it going, Marco? Very fine. There was a couple of matches last night. We're recording this on Thursday. Uh, Sampdoria Roma was one all, and uh, Lazio beat uh, Udinese. Uh, 3-0. Uh, it doesn't really make much of a, a change to the table, though, does it? Roma is still the same. Sampdoria is still the same. Yeah. Uh, in uh, in uh, our uh, Facebook group, uh, we advise uh, uh, double chance in in uh, Sampdoria Roma. So 1-1 one, one and bet 1. Uh, there is a great difficulty in, uh, in this moment in... Uh, uh, Roma ambient uh, because many many voice for transfer transfer mart uh, Zeko Nagolan um, uh, the team uh, it, it, at the moment uh, not play very very good and it's strange that uh, um, there will be the the same match uh, um, Sunday uh, with Sampdoria again so uh, is a uh, is a uh, is difficult to bet uh, in uh, in uh, on this match, but uh, I I get focus in uh, three match for this week uh, in uh, in Serie A. The first uh, is uh, on uh, um, on Saturday, Evo versus Juventus. Uh, Juventus have a streak uh, for uh, twelve play, twelve match with. Uh, um clean sheet so is a great streak and my my suggestion is uh, uh, both team to score no 
at 1.70. Uh, uh, In my opinion, uh, uh, Juventus can uh, be to continue this uh, streak in a clean sheet. Marco, Marco, I'll just jump in there. What's what's the story with this clean sheet? Is Wojciech Szczesny a good goalkeeper, or is it really just down to the Juventus defence? No, um, it's not. Uh, it's not in. A, in a uh, goalkeeper because uh, uh, many many match uh, play Buffon, mm-hmm, but uh, the last match play Ch- uh, Chesney, so is not in uh, in goalkeeper. In my opinion, is uh, is uh, in a uh, in a tactics uh, in a, uh, defensive roster. Allegri is a very good uh, coach in uh, in defensive play, and uh, Juventus uh, uh, come back to. To um, the, the next two years uh, with a great uh, defense. Okay, cool. What's the other matches then you have, Marco? The, uh, the other two match is uh, one for relegation. Crotone versus Cagliari is not a a, a big match, but uh, for me is a good prize because uh, Crotone last week won three uh, three or no in um, in Verona home. And uh, the the was uh, a great result, unexpected result, and uh, um, the the guys of Zenga coach have uh, a good uh, um, a good uh, mentality in this moment. And for me, um, a win in uh, in home against Calgary at uh, two dot thirty five uh, is a is a very good price for me. Um, the, the stadium can can be to to help uh, this uh, this team and the the other uh, the other match is a very big match uh, when Milan versus Lazio um, two teams with uh, a good uh, um, forward players so in my opinion over dot uh, f- uh, five at uh, one dot seventy five is a is a good choice. What was it over two point five? Yeah, yeah, two point okay. five. Magic. Okay, so uh, what else has been going on then in 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 Syria this week? Um, uh, according to the the British press, um, Roma are about to lose uh, two players, Edin Dzeko and uh, Emerson. Is uh, uh, but uh, Dzeko played and scored last night. He's going to be a big miss for Roma, isn't he? But I've heard as well that they have to sell because of uh, FIFA, um, uh, UEFA fair play rules, and they'll be penalised. Yes, yes, sure, but uh, it's difficult to explain this uh, uh, to Roma fans, <laughs> and they are very, very angry. Uh, in Italy, in Italy, um, fans uh, um, uh, don't care of this uh, financial fair play and economy they want they want to have the best player and won the match and all it is yeah it's a shame it's uh because he's he's leaving Rome as the main striker and he'll be he'll be just a, a substitute a super stri- a super sub for Chelsea so look Marco thanks for your tips then man thanks for having us and we'll speak to you next week have a nice weekend bye bye I want to talk about this uh, Nations League. Uh, who did England get? Croatia and Spain. Oh, so that's a nice couple of kind of friendlies, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's all right. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think I've found anyone that's excited about this tournament yet. Are well, you excited? I was I was really excited about it until we got Wales and Denmark, who we've played in <laughs> our last two feckin' matches. You know, I was like, we've already played them, like, a couple of weeks ago. We're never gonna have that. Now we have to play them twice. Again? It's ridiculous, you know, it's, I'm, I'm not happy at all. I was expecting, I don't know, Czech Republic, Ukraine, something like that, you know, something where I could get into the, get, get a train or get into the car and go, and go watch Ireland. <laughs> That's what I wanted. But, uh, <laughs> no, to be honest, uh, Martin, I, 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 I had kind of, when I heard that it was only, uh, three teams in these, you know, mini leagues or whatever, I was disappointed. I thought, yeah. like, they could have made it better, maybe, like a four four team or 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 bigger and uh, but I don't know now. But then again, I think I think they're better than friendlies because at least there's something to play for, you know. Yeah, for sure. I don't know what happens. To, I know there's promotion and relegation, but I'm actually not sure if you if you get promoted, what what league do you actually go in from where you are? Okay, so I don't really understand. England are in Group A. There are four groups yep. in Group A. Um, the bottom. For a bottom team in each group will get relegated to Group B, 
Uh, so and and the top team in each Group B group will get promoted to Group A. Uh-huh. So if you're in, if you get relegated from Group A one, you go into B one, do you? Well, no, you just go into Group B and there's a draw and uh, yeah. another draw. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I, I, I've got to That's be good. honest. I'm not really excited by the Nations League for England, but I like yeah. the idea of going to see Liechtenstein versus Gibraltar. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be a fantastic game, and I'm all over it. I do like the fact that it seems more even now. So you know, the lesser teams have got chance of winning games, yeah, which yeah, is yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll be good. For, I think it will be good for international football. I think they just kind of got the format a bit wrong. But I'm sure, I mean, you wait for, aren't shy of tinkering with stuff. I mean, they've changed the Champions League format, I don't know how many times, and, and, and the, the Euros mm. and stuff like that. So I, I think they will be very quick to change something if it's not working, you know? Hopefully. Uh, I, I think it'd be good for betting as well, though. Okay, so hear me out, right? In European Championship games, you have uh, uh, groups that are decided by, like, you have one, one team from each pot. Mm-hmm. And so you get a lot of one-sided games. Whereas, like, yeah. Liechtenstein versus Gibraltar. Yeah. That's going to be pretty even. How are you going to pick a winner there, like? Luxembourg versus San Marino. <laughs> you know. Um, Malta versus Kosovo. I think there's actually going to be some great games to bet on that are pretty even. And from a betting yeah. point of view, I, 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 I'm kind of looking forward to it, but I, I, I must admit I'm a bit hipster about this sort of thing. I don't really care about the big teams. I, I, I'm genuinely, genuinely going to look into going to see some of the smaller teams play if I can. <laughs> because why not? You know. I can um, see you in a Kosovo shirt, all right. <laughs> um, yeah, may, maybe not Kosovo, but definitely San Marino versus Luxembourg. I'd definitely get to that one. <laughs> of course, you get you get a couple of days off in Italy. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Uh, no, a couple of days off in San Marino. Ah, well, you know what I mean. You have to go through Italy same, to get there. <laughs> As you probably know, podcasts still grow by word of mouth. Show your support for the Pro Tipster Football Show by telling your football mad friends all about our podcast or by leaving a nice review for us on iTunes. Uh, now we're going to have a look at the championship where, um, bizarrely, uh, Leeds have changed their crest. Have we all seen this, lads? I believe Aww. we had a collective lull about it. <laughs> <laughs> Edit. <laughs> um, did you see uh, P- Paddy Power had on uh, Twitter just a few minutes ago that they have found the original template for it on Shutterstock? Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> and it was um, so another random club. You could, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And so it's like, literally exactly the same, you can but di- just a different colour. Yeah, you, can, you can go to the Shutterstock. It's a stock image website. You can buy an image, and then you have complete licence to use it as you see fit. So... Whoever the graphic designer Leeds hired just said, no, nah, I'm not bothered, I don't like Leeds. And he just bought one off Shutterstock for probably about $100. <laughs> See, I thought they'd nicked you from Gavishcon personally. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's, let's get to the games then. So, um, 12th placed Ipswich are taking on top of the table, uh, Wolves. Um, Dan. Yeah, um, I've got to be honest, I've not written anything for this because um, having been in Israel for a week, um, my, my access to championship football has been quite limited. Um, even Birmingham City I was struggling with. I know Ipswich have signed uh, a 19-year-old centre-back. They're, they're quite happy about it, but um, he's come from like fifth division in France, so I don't think he's going anywhere too fast. But Wolves lost last week, didn't they? Yeah, from the Forest at home. Bit of a shock yeah. of that. Yeah, really, a really, really bad shot. performance as well. Yeah. So... Um, I'll be looking to see if Wolves are going to bounce back against uh, their, their former manager, Mick McCarthy. Mm. Um, you know, two up front, one in the hole. For now, for now. Um, t- sorry, have you ever seen the gif of, uh, it's zooming in on Mick McCarthy and his Wolves yeah, manager? Yeah, of course, yeah. And he's like, oh, one yes. in the hole, you say? <laughs> it's just like, it's just the eyebrow. Um, and that's, that's all I can think of when I think of Mick McCarthy. I actually, yeah. Um, <laughs> Just just on paper, I'd be looking at Wolves away win, but... Um, uh, the odds are low, aren't they? 1.7 yeah. around that. But you've got to ask yourself, they, they were poor against Forest. Are they going to be poor again this week, or is, uh, is the manager fixed it? I don't know. Mm, hard to call. What do you think, Martin? Um, yeah, it's tough to call. Um, Wolves are in a bit of a sticky patch at the minute. Um, yes, they lost to Forest 2-0, but um, they didn't score against Barnsley either before that. Um, only scored one against Swansea when they lost 2-1, but before that as well, it, it, that was 0-0. So they're, they're struggling to score goals over the last few games. Uh, whereas Ipswich, 
Uh, we were talking about Leeds just now. They got a great win over Leeds uh, last time out at home. And I've actually gone... I mean, Wolves are short, and, you know, rightly so, they're flying, but um, there's no value like in that sort of market for me. So I've actually found a little bit of value, in my opinion, on under one and a half Wolverhampton Wanderers goals at 1.80. Um, they, they've got goals in them, that, you know, let's, let's be honest about that, but just going on what kind of form they're in at the minute and the fact they've only scored only scored one goal in, in four games. So um, that's what I'm going with here. I, it, it, it'll, be a, it'll be an interesting affair, but I don't expect it to be a spectacular game. I have done the complete opposite uh, than you, Mark. I, 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 I don't usually give out my, my tips here at all because I tend to write them or, or put them in the videos. Um, yeah, I had actually... Uh, I'm trying to find it now. Where's the article? Yeah, I had... Uh, yeah, I'd gone for Wolves to score more than 1.5 because... Uh, whereas in 7 out of 10 of their last away, they've scored uh, more than 2 and in 3 of their last 4 at Portland Road... They've also scored two or more. So, ha ha! Let's, let's, put, let's put money on this, Martin, and see who the winner is next week. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to put 50 cents on it. <laughs> <laughs> right then, let's get, uh, let's, uh, let's take a jaunt into Europe and we're going to go to the Bundesliga and we're going to talk about a team that I think we've only featured once on the podcast, um, since I joined Pro Tipster anyway. But Bayern Munich are taking on, uh, Hoffenheim and we'll stay with you then, Martin, on this. Yeah, I think we've only featured them once because they just keep winning and winning and <laughs> it's just, you know, there's no, there's no value in any of their yeah, games yeah, and yeah, yeah. for me, I, there's no value here either. I mean, I was looking at my, minus was one it, and the, a half. The last, time, the last time we spoke about them, you, you were mentioning the value because it was, uh, they were away to Dortmund and they were priced, I think, 2.1, 2.2 and you were saying, look, you never get Bayern at this price, like take it and, and the end oh, of the Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So if you ever see Bayern anywhere close to evens, 1.9 or above, jump on it. Um, and Hoffenheim as well. I mean, I went to the Hamburg Hoffenheim game a month or two ago and they, they got smashed 3-0 by Hamburg, who are, who are really struggling this season and they looked awful. At ho- it's weird. At home, they they seem to be really good. Um, and they did actually, um, beat Bayern Munich at home this season and last season. Yeah, that's right. Home, that's but, right. But, you know, but away from home, it just doesn't seem to doesn't seem to work um, for Hoffenheim. I don't know what he is. He lost four, drawn one, the last five away games. Um, and I, I personally, I was looking at the history of the games and head to heads as well. I can't, I can't actually see that Bayern Munich have ever lost at home to Hoffenheim either. So <laughs> the fact the fact that they've also not not even lost home game in the league for nearly two years, um, I can understand why they're so short, but. I, just to play safe, I think minus one and a half on the Asian handicap at one point five five is short, but I think it's definitely worth putting in an accumulator because I can I, think I can see it coming in quite comfortably. Have you been following much of of Munich uh, this season, Martin? Because their 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 squad is aging to say the least. Like, okay, Lewandowski isn't old yet, but he's you know heading towards that part of his career. Yeah, Hamas, I mean... Hamas Rodriguez um, still has plenty of years in him as well, but a lot of them, they're, they're the wrong side of 28, 29, you know? Yeah, they need to make some uh, shrewd transfers in the next couple of years, but, you know, 28, 28 29, 30 is still, still a ripe age. Mm. Um, I, think, I think they've got a good, good couple of years of dominance before they need to... Haven't they uh, um, just signed Goretzka? Uh, yeah, but they had as well on a when, free transfer, wasn't it? When, is, is he there now, or is is it after the summer? He's there now. Is summer, he? I think. Uh, is it there now? But I he, thought it was a summer. I don't, he, I don't know because I, I don't, the last thing I read was the the Schalke fans put up that big banner telling them to, you know, go to the hills for want of a better expression and, and get the hell out mm. of there. Um, so I'm not 100 percent sure. No. He's not going. Yet. I mean, the problem problem Bayern Munich are going to have in the next couple of years is the money for the you know the money for the Bundesliga just isn't there in comparison to the likes of the Premier League and that. And you've got if you have star men like Lewandowski and and, and uh, Rodriguez or, or whoever um, or even Thomas Muller that aren't earning when they look at what other people are earning in other leagues, they you know it's, it's going to be hard to keep hold of them. Yeah. I mean, there's there's not a lot of lo- loyalty in football these days, unfortunately. No, so wasn't that. Uh, Dan, how do you see this going? 
Um, much the same as Martin. Um, I'm just looking through the stats. Um, Hoffenheim have, like, like Martin said, Hoffenheim have never beaten Bayern at uh, the Allianz Arena. Uh, they've drawn twice, lost seven. Um, but Bayern, they're just so boring. <laughs> <sighs> I, 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 you know, <laughs> again, football hipster, 1860 Munich for the win, or, um, SPVGG <laughs> under hacking. Yeah. I, I can't even pronounce their name right. There you go. Um, I, I've been to Munich once and I went to a fifth division ground. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm just looking, I, I'm looking at it and it, Bayern to win by three is it, the current bet, it seems like that, that people are going for and that, that, that seems quite heavy, but, um, so in six of their nine home games this, this, this season, Bayern have won by three goals. Um, maybe, uh, look at Bayern to win half time, Bayern to win full time. They've led 89% of matches at half time. Um, That's a good shot. yeah, when in these kind of games where there, where, where there's a heavy favorite, you've got to look for more than just I mean, I'm talking like in general, Martin obviously knows this, but I think you, you, you've got to look for um, more than just like team to win. You've got to look at handicaps. You've got to look at things like half time, uh, who's winning at half time, because sometimes there's value there. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of like big win handicaps because it's easy for teams to just sit back and go, nah, can't be asked today. But yeah, and, and, and Huffenheim, I've only scored twice in the last four games on the road. So, yeah, Bayern to win to nothing seems like it. Like, maybe both teams are scoring, uh, n- no, but I'm guessing the odds of that are probably really low as well. Uh, I have that. Both teams to score no is, uh, two. Yep, there you go. That's my bet. Both teams to score no. At 2.00. Magic. Okay. Wow. It's great value. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There, there's always value there if you look hard enough. And, yeah. you know, Bayern to win to nil looks like the bet to me because as I said, um, half and a home don't score away from home. They just don't. Uh, next, we're off to Spain. We'll, we'll be back to England in a minute for the last two uh, big FA Cup matches. But uh, Spain is our final European uh, destination. Third place, Valencia are take, taking on fourth place, Real Madrid. Uh, Madrid made a meal of their match last week and finally started scoring goals again. Um, Martin, how do you see this one going? Well, it's a... Uh... It's a very interesting game, and I think there's a lot of value here on Valencia um, to enjoy. You know, 19, Real Madrid, 19 points behind Barcelona. They got humiliated by Leganes in, uh, in the Copa del Rey midweek. Um, and I think it was actually the first time in Copa del Rey history that a team has gone to the Bernabeu and knocked Real Madrid out after being behind in the first leg. Wow, that's a stat. That's lovely. That's one for the pub quiz. Yeah, it is. Uh, we should do a pub quiz. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, one defeat at home all season for Valencia. Um, and they ne- actually nearly won in the Bernabeu in August as well. I think it was uh, Asensio got a late a late goal there. Um, I think they were two on art when it ended two all. Um, but just looking at there's no value for me in both teams to score or overs. Ridiculously low. Um, just you know, just because both teams to score has come in in the last 10 meetings in a row and overs in the last nine meetings in a row. Um, so you can certainly guarantee goals. But Valencia plus one on the Asian handicap is 1.85. And just the fact that, you know, Real Madrid are in the form they're in and Valencia are having a pretty good season themselves. Um, there's, yeah, that screams value to me. And I'm very surprised that Dan's still there, in all honesty. Oh, yeah, I'm, must I'm still here. President. I'm still here. Um, Spanish football bores me. <laughs> I'm, j- I'm just going to put it out there. I, I, Spanish football, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, I don't bet on it. Sorry. So you've not and dad here, Dan. Nope. Nope. Fair enough. Would, would you, would you agree that Valencia will value this weekend? Yeah, I would because, um, well, like, like you said, I can't believe what's going wrong with Real Madrid. I don't know how Zidane's still in the job, so. Um, yeah, yeah I, I'd be looking to bet against Real Madrid at the moment, but that's that's purely that's not based on me knowing much about Spanish football. That's based on me seeing Real Madrid a crap plastered everywhere. So look, what's 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 best best here then, lads? Is it is it better to go to an exchange and and, and lay Real, or is it better to take the handicap like what like what you had picked there, Martin? 
Uh, depends. It uh, depends on what you prefer betting on, really. I think if you if you love trading, then laying Real Madrid is certainly a certainly an option. Or but surely, like, uh, like from, from from just a, a price perspective, I'm a punter with a tenner in my pocket. Do I lay Real Madrid for six euros fifty, or do I put the full tenner and win eight back? You know, it's a, t- it's a tough one. I think it all it just depends on your preference, really. Um, I mean, I, I used to love laying, um, back in and laying on, on the exchanges, but now I'm more of a, more of a social novelty punter and, uh, look for value really. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd, I'd probably just, just back it on the handicap to be honest. Yeah, I, I think, um, I, I was actually wondering where you was going to go when you said you used to love laying, but, uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it comes down to how much of a, a trader you are. Um, like for example, yeah. me, I'm, I'm just a social better, so I would just go with a handicap. But if you're the kind of person who likes to cash out and likes to hedge your bets, and the trading is the way to go, mm. the exchange is the way to go because it's not uh, – for me, exchange betting isn't about getting a, a bet right. It's about getting a, a bet right enough that you can trade out and make a profit. And that's where the real skill comes with exchanges. It's not about – saying that this team will win. It's about getting the odds in such a, a favourable place where you can mathematically back every outcome and still be a winner. Um, and, yeah. it, you know, um, people use software to do this sort of thing. Um, obviously, you've got to have a fairly decent bankroll to do it, but if you're a serious punter, then that's the way to go. Whereas me, I, I'm not a serious punter. I'm, I'm just like a... I'm just the kind of guy who, you know, puts a few euros on every week. So I just go with the handicaps myself. All right, fair enough. Uh, I am a big fan of trading, though. I will put 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 that out there. I I love a bit of. Well, if I, I miss you, Betfair, please come back to Poland, please. <laughs> uh, joining me in studio, then we have our Spanish La Liga expert, pro tipster David. How's it going? Hi everyone. Hey, no, fine. Uh, so, uh, what's been going on in La Liga this week? Have there been any good transfers we need to know about, or? I mean, good stories. I mean, we don't have the money. Premier League had the money, you know. <laughs> you are you are taking all, all the good players to to you. I don't have big transfer, you know. Only Coutinho, he was the biggest one. But I see Laporte going to Premier League. Waita, the goalkeeper of Getafe, he going to Crystal Palace. Yeah. Yeah, to play in Crystal Palace. Yeah. Okay. Did he pending? I know. I'm not sure if it's already official. But uh, he was he was there. He was in London, right? Mm-hmm. And he's already there. But uh, they, we don't have money. You had the money. Yeah, okay. Was well, that me? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, UK. Uh, this uh, Bilbao defender that's gone to Manchester City. What 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 do you think of him? Is he going to be a good a good fit for them? Laporte, yeah, it could be fine. But for me, they're still a bit uh, young, so he need to. Earn. It, it is quite similar to a Stone for me, in my opinion. He good with the ball, but it's still weak in, yeah. in defense. Okay. So he need to learn a lot. But uh, with Guardiola, the guy who created the football, he he going he going to learn a lot, you know. <laughs> the guy who created the football. He going to learn a lot. So that's a good one. Uh, but okay, seventy million, right? Is crazy, yeah, you know. He yeah. spent like more than three hundred million of euro in defender. Yeah. Okay, in defender, insane, isn't it? But but he can't buy a good. Well, hopefully he'll be good because. Mendy has been terrible. Oh, the Mendy had a bad first season. He's okay now. But Ederson, goalkeeper, is quite good. Yeah, uh, no, the keeper's good, yeah. yeah. But, you know, I'm, I see he will win the, the Premier League this season, but of course. I can win the Premier League as well with Manchester City <laughs> if I have all these players like he has. Yeah, maybe so, man. Uh, wait, what's going on? What's happening then this weekend? Are there any big uh, standout matches? Well, we had the biggest matches on Saturday. We have Valencia, Real Madrid. Tough time for Real Madrid. I mean, the boys, the boys have, uh, the boys have actually tipped uh, Valencia on the handicap. And yeah, it's three, mm-hmm. three points seventy-five. Mm-hmm. Uh, Asiatic handicap, Valencia to to win three points seventy-five. But to be honest, I was checking and mm, it can be possible. But uh, Valencia had uh, important players that cannot play in defense. They don't have any. Only Garay, the central defender Garay, is available. And Murillo and um, Gabriel Paulista, he was injured yesterday in the Spanish Cup. Gabriel Paulista is a former Arsenal central mm-hmm, defender. Mm-hmm. He was injured yesterday, and Murillo is out of 
because of the red car, yeah, red car last, last weekend. So they have Oligaray, and I was reading that uh, Cochrane, Cochrane, he will be playing as central defender. I don't know how it, how good mm. it is as central defender. So, I mean, it's possible Valencia. I mean, the situation of Real Madrid is really hard right now, and the odd is quite high, 3.75, something mm. like that. But uh, I don't know. For me, I'm not going to go to to bet for Valencia, of course. I will go for Real Madrid, for sure. <laughs> we will 1.76, 1.73, something like that, or 63? 63. 63, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it should be fine. You think so, yeah? Yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, yesterday was terrible, you know. You cannot you cannot lose against Leganes at home for 1-2 situation. In, I mean... The season, let's say that it's almost over. You have only the Champions League game and again PSG in 14th of February, the first game, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I don't see, I mean, right now, I don't see that they can beat the PSG right now. But, I don't know, maybe in 14 days, 15 days, everything changed. Yeah, it could, it but right happen. now, I cannot see that. Uh, anything else then from this weekend? For the weekend, well, we have one good game, in my opinion, Villarreal, Real Sociedad, they play football really well, offensive football, so it can be quite interesting game, maybe looking for over two and a half goals, something like that, it can be a really interesting game. And what else? We have uh, Barcelona La Vez, at home, in no count, so... 4-5-6-0. Maybe plus three and a half goals, and Messi score three, <laughs> or something <laughs> like that. But uh, there are not so more, more games interesting. Atletico Madrid play at home against Las Palmas. Las Palmas is the last on the league. So, and Atletico is coming after losing in the Spanish Cup with Sevilla in quarterfinals. So maybe some positive handicap for Las Palmas, something like that. But well, it's difficult, you know, at home on Vanda Metropolitano. Mm-hmm. It's difficult to to see that. Okay. Good stuff, then. So happy. Right, okay. Then. So thanks very much, then, for our tips to David, and uh, we'll speak to you next week. If you have any betting questions you'd like to ask, don't be shy. Get in touch with Patty, Martin, or Dan on Twitter. Pro Tipster I R L, Pro Tipster E N, or Pro Tipster D A N, or on Facebook at Pro Tipster U K. Uh, let's move on then to the Sunday round of FA Cup. Matches, uh, Chelsea are taken on Newcastle. Chelsea could have new signings. Ed and Jekyll and Emerson Palmieri were not sure. Uh, Jekyll played last night for Roma, scored in the 92nd minute to get them a draw against Sampdoria. Um, we don't know. Apparently Roma have to sell because of financial fair play rules, as pro tipster Marco said earlier in the podcast. Um, so yeah, um I'm talking too much about Roma. I'm should be talking about Chelsea. Um Chelsea <laughs> lost to Arsenal as well last night and uh, Arsenal are just, you know, just fantastic at home. Uh, Martin, how do you see this one going, man? Um I, th- I think Chelsea will win it, but for me I, I haven't actually written too much about this game because I'm not really I'm not really too interested in it and I don't really see any value. Um you know, they Chelsea won 3-1 earlier in the season has a scored a couple has our scored a couple of goals. Um you know, he demolished Brighton as well, so he's on fire at the moment. And if he turns up, yeah, I think he'll play. I don't think Chelsea will rotate, but a couple of their best players will stay on the side because I think they'll want to win a trophy this year. Um, and I think Newcastle need to sort their ownership out, really, before anything else. I, I think there's major distractions um, at the top in the club. And, uh, yeah, I think I think that's having a detrimental effect on, on the, the way Newcastle are playing at the moment. All right, Dan, any words of wisdom? Um, I was just going to um, point to a quote that I saw today um, from Conte uh, after the, uh, the defeat to Arsenal. He said, when, when there is an injury to one of your best players, it is not simple, especially when on the bench the only substitute is Ross Barkley. Oh. <laughs> Did you say that, yeah? Um, I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you the full context, but um, the, the full context isn't so bad. Um, but it does seem like he went for the jugular with this one, you know. Uh, he carried on to um, carried on to say, Barkley has a lot of space for improvement. He's working with us only two weeks, but for sure today I was forced to make this substitution. But he can improve a lot. So you know he's saying like he's, well, Ross Barkley's not played for months because he's been injured, mm. and he didn't want to throw him in at the deep end. But this is part mm. of the problem that, that Chelsea have is that um, 
and I, I'm, it's interesting reading, um, I was reading on Reddit, and they're talking about how Chelsea don't have the, you know, contest and they don't have the depth. Just because he's not playing the youth, you know, he didn't put Charlie Masonder on the bench. He's not playing him, yeah. you know, they, they, they've let, um, RK, Chaloba, Loftus Cheek, uh, Abraham all either leave or go out on loan. Um, Christian Atsu, who of course is at Newcastle. Kennedy, um, won't be able to play because of uh, yeah. eligibility rules. But it's like, they have, they have these, um, these issues with depth, but is it because they're, they're just not giving a chance to the younger players? I don't know. Um, I look at, I look at Chelsea's team and without Morata, um, you, you know, when, when they're playing Pedro and Willian, I, I actually like Willian, but I don't think Pedro's up to much. And, you know, I, I, I think, um, I think Edin Dzeko is actually the player that they need. Um, mm. I don't know much about Pal- Palmieri, but, but I do think Edin Dzeko is the kind of player they need. They, it's daft that, you know, they're going for like, there's, it's like they almost put an advert out, six foot one striker <laughs> needed, you know, aging material, <laughs> Premier, Premier League experience uh, preferred. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I can see why. I can see what they're looking for. Um, I, I think Conte's on borrowed time, actually. Um, I think Abramovich is going to get bored with him, like he did with Mourinho. And I think he'll get binned at the end of the season. There was talk of... I'm trying to remember who it was. Uh, I've forgotten. There, Ancelotti. There was, Ancelotti, yeah. Was it? I don't it know. might be Ancelotti. There was talk of someone coming in next season. Oh. Um, it's not Pochettino, because Pochettino's going to Real Madrid, apparently. Ooh. I'd like to see, I'd like, like to see Ancelotti back. I love a bit of Ancelotti. Yeah. Um, let's move on then to, uh, we'll stick with you, Dan, please. Uh, potential giant killing klaxon, please. Uh, Cardiff City are taking on Manchester City. Yeah, you can put the klaxon away. <laughs> Not, gonna <laughs> Not gonna happen. Um, <laughs> Cardiff have done really well this season, actually. Um, they've got some players who maybe aren't like the, um, they're not like Wolves who've got, you know, all these, Amazing stars, you know, they brought in Nathaniel Mendes Lang, uh, they've got Kenneth Sahore, they've got, um, what's the, the lad Rawls, they, they, they've got some Joe Rawls, yeah, it's mm-hmm. Joe Rawls, isn't it? Um, they, they, they've got some really good championship talent and Neil Warnock, as much as I, I have to say this through gritty teeth because I hate the guy, <laughs> old, old Collins got the team playing well together, um, and, but Man City, you know, they're, yeah. they're going to sign, uh, Imeric Laporte, um, to just cap off how good, you know, to, to sort out the one problem they might have in defence of not having three world class defenders. Um, I, I can't see, I can't see Man City not getting anything but a win. I think they'll rotate and I think they'll still be good enough. Um, it's been interesting to see Zinchenko getting, uh, game time in the Premier League at left back. Um, I think, but I think Danilo will come in. I think, uh, Bernardo Silva will get more game time. Mm-hmm. And. He looks like Kevin De Bruyne's Aryan clone, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, 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 the, the, the sad thing is, as much as I want to hate this Man City team, I can't. I love watching them play. I love what Pep's got them doing. Like, this is what me and you were arguing about earlier. This is the Tom Brady thing. You know? I you, t- you hate Tom Brady. I hate Tom Brady. Tom Brady's a cheat. <laughs> <laughs> Sue me, Tom. Sue me. We're gonna we're gonna have a very interesting superb owl uh, podcast in in next week. Um, uh, Martin, what do you think? Um, I've only written one line here, and I've written it will be a good day out for Cardiff fans, but City are not losing this. Um, and yes, yeah, City aren't losing it. Yeah, Cardiff are doing well, but. City's strength in depth is incredible and the youngsters they've got coming through as well with, you know, that left back, I can't pronounce his name, um, <laughs> and, and Phil Foden as well when he comes back and, uh, yeah, I'm gonna wait for the lineups because I haven't actually gone for anything yet. I don't know if City are gonna win it by one or a few and that will, you know, uh, that will be based on their starting 11 for me. Um, so I'm gonna wait for the lineups for having a bet but, as are, well as Cardiff and Neil Warner could do it, I can't see anything else but a City win. Are Cardiff scoring a lot, or is it one nils, one nils, one nil? Are they scoring a good bit? Yeah, they are scoring goals. So what about both teams to score then? That's about one point nine. Because Man City's defence, I mean, they're 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 letting in goals. They don't have all that many clean sheets, you know. No, uh, it could be. Oh, I don't know. Uh, again, wait for the lineups on that. It, it, it all it all depends. I mean, mm-hmm. Cardiff, 
you know, Cardiff might go into this thinking, oh, we haven't got a chance, so we'll just rest a few players and 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 focus on the league. But you never know. So, but as we always say, it's the FA Cup, so definitely wait for lineups on this before okay. going for anything. But there could be value in both teams to score, you know. That I think there will be. I'm just looking at the Man City forums now. And they're suggesting uh, a back five. Uh, Bravo in goal, obviously. Danilo, company, Mangala, Zinchenko. Doesn't exactly fill me with confidence. Um, mm. I'm not a big fan of Claudio Bravo as a keeper. I think Mangala, how how they paid 32 million for Mangala, I have no idea. Um, he's not good enough. Um, yeah, and, you know, the, the, there'll be chances. I think there'll be chances. Um yeah, but the thing is, it, it, it's up front, and that's where they're going to get killed. You know, how how do you stop a team that you know? I, I think Aguero will start. Yeah, it was like it's like with Bristol the other night. It, yeah, it really so looked well. like there was going to be a fairy tale ending to the Bristol City match, and then with the last attack, just they 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 they, they had this fantastic counter attack, and Kevin De Bruyne stuck it in the back of the net like and just ended yeah. all. It was heartbreaking for Bristol, but you know City did deserve it. It was it was a good game. Uh, right, we're just going to uh, take a very very quick look then at the last two matches from uh, Sunday that we've picked. So Serie A, we have third place AC Milan taking on seventh place Lazio, and we have fifth place Roma and sixth place Sampdoria. Now, of course, you will have already heard Pro Tips or Marco speaking about these two matches, but Pro, T- Pro Tips or Martin has a beautiful stat for the Milan Lazio match. I'll get this stat out of the way straight away. Although I don't actually, it might be longer. I was just checking historical records and it only went back the last 25 years. And since at least 1993, Lazio have not won away against AC Milan in Serie A, which is quite an incredible record, really. And, you know, some teams just have, just have a bogey side, don't they? And it looks like AC Milan are Lazio's bogey sides. Um, they play on Wednesday randomly in a cup as well, so this would be a little bit of a warm up for that. But um I think I'm looking forward to the game. It's one of those that I used to love watching this game like in the nineties, you know, with the you know, with the likes of like Sadorf and Gaza playing for Lazio and I used to love nineties oh, yeah, Serie A football. Had, like Rude Gullet would still have been there. Oh the the Dutch lads would, would all have been at AC Milan and Gaza was there. Oh, oh man, yes. That's amazing. You know? That was lovely. But um no, AC Milan in good form since, you know, they've got a morale boost in uh, winning the Cup in the Coppa Italia against Inter. And since then, uh, they've done pretty well. They've got, got a draw away to Fiorentina and won a couple of games against Crotone and Cagliari. Uh, but Lazio as well are in decent form. Um, they won six, drawn two of the last eight in all competitions. And as as much as, you know, Lazio are in good form, I can't dismiss that stat that, at least 25 years have not won away at Milan, so I don't. I'm not sure Milan will win it. So I've gone down the middle here, and I think it could well be a draw, uh, 3.34. Fair enough, Dan. You, I don't think you really. No. <laughs> um, so Milan versus Lazio. Again, uh, I'm going to go back to this um, thing of looking into other things for value, and the referee for this game is Massimiliano Irati. Oh, what a name! What a what a fantastic Italian name. He's <laughs> Refereed, I'm, I'm looking at soccer base for this, so um, I don't know how great their referee stats are, but he's, they've got uh, Massimiliano, Massimiliano Irati having refereed nine Serie A games this season. He's already shown 31 yellow cards. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's, I'd be looking at cards this game. Um, I'd be looking at, uh, I don't know where the line is because we, we, it's, not, it's not a market we offer on Pro Tips, but I know. He can get over and under on yellow cards. And he has not gone a game where he's not got the book out at least once. Um, most games, uh, just one, two, three, four, five out of those nine games, he's shown at least four yellow cards. <laughs> there you go. I love and, Italian football. So that, that, that's, that, that's, that's what I'd be looking at. Just as, just as a statistical anomaly. Magic. All right then. And so the last one Marco spoke about was Rome, Roma versus, uh, Sampdoria. Uh, so I'm just going to ask you for a quick score prediction, uh, Martin. Um, two-one Roma. I think they'll get there. They got a draw, obviously. I, I, I can't actually remember seeing this before. They played in Serie A last night. It's we're crazy, recording this obviously on Thursday, it's crazy. and now they're playing at the weekend. Yeah. So I, I don't get it. I don't so, get it. Um, 
Jacko got them out of jail, and I think they'll turn it around at the Olympic uh, Olympic Stadium and uh, they'll win two one for me. Magic Dan. One one. One one. <laughs> right then, so look, that brings us to the end of our. Uh, I'll do it again. Okay then, so that brings us to the end of this episode of the Pro Tipster Football Podcast. We hope you enjoyed it and that you like hearing from the different experts that we have here. Um, let's do our Twitter reminders then, Martin. Or sorry, let's do our social media reminders then, Martin. Where are you on the internet? Uh, on Twitter, you can find me at ProTipster ENG and on Facebook at ProTipster Martin. Uh, guys, ask me anything. Happy to help with anything you might have, whether it be any help on betting strategies, any tips, info on ProTipster, or just to make fun that I support West Ham. <laughs> and Dan, where are you? Yeah, I'm ProTipster Dan, both on Twitter and Facebook. Um, yeah, as the same as Martin, come talk, make fun of my tips. Um, we haven't mentioned Birmingham City this week, thank God. <laughs> Um, yeah, make fun of that too if you want, because um, I do. Uh, yeah, be good to see you there. Magic, all right. And you can get me Pro Tips or Pod on Twitter, or uh, you can get in touch with all three of us over on the Facebook group, uh, Pro Tipster UK on Facebook. We have loads of groups there as well. We have American sports groups, we have a football group and a tennis group as well, where we give our tips and we talk about uh, the sports in general. Right, so look, that's it from us then. Make sure and check us out on iTunes, Stitcher, other pod catchers and our pro tips to blog as well and keep spreading the word about our lovely little podcast too and tell all of your sports mad friends all about us right that's it from me and the lads then so good luck and enjoy the football thanks for listening everybody don't forget to check out protipster.com where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips check us out on youtube and instagram our handles there are pro tipster global or get in touch on twitter Pro Tipster E-N or Pro Tipster I-R-L. Bye.